In these videos, I will take a look at some of the comments that you, the viewer, have shared with me. Some of these comments may be posted on my YouTube channel. Some of them may not be, depending upon their content. I use this as an opportunity to answer questions, address criticisms, and acknowledge criticisms, of course, and direct the conversation, keep it going in the manner of which this YouTube channel is intended, meaning it is a grammar channel. This is a channel to talk about correct sentence structure, communication, parsi, syntax, grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public by Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. And so that's the main purpose of this channel. So if you see a comment in this comments video that has not been posted on my channel, I'm probably using it as an example as to what not to post in the comments field. This is definitely a learning place, a place for learning where I teach not only the grammar, but also the psychology of the grammar. One other thing, I don't ever take anything personal. It's never personal. Although it may seem like it is at times, it's not. It's not at all. And I highly recommend everyone out there commenting, follow the same protocol. Don't take anything personal that I say. What you put in is what you get out. The energy that you bring here, I will most likely either give back to you, maybe a little bit, or maybe a thousandfold. It just depends upon how you approach me. This is my vessel. There are terms and conditions. If you comply with them, Everything's peachy. If you don't, well, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. Without further ado, let's get to the comments. Hello and welcome. Hope everybody out there is having a groovy day. We're going to get into the grammar right off the bat in this edition of the comments video. And this, this comment comes from longtime viewer and member and one-time student, Colin Jason hyphen space capital X capital R hyphen four and they say colon for this claimants hyphen sensation now right off the bat do you see an error here do you see something that is not correct here there's a colon in front of for the for this so basically what Jason is saying is for this for this which is not correct, of course. Throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. It's not correct sentence structure. The colon is not necessary because the colon, in this case, in the cause position of the sentence, represents for the. So for the is already there. He has for the, for this written out. Position, lodial, fact, phrase. The first one in the cause position. Why is the colon there? It's not necessary. And also, the way he has this written, it's what... Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller would call grafting it, which is, again, it's not a correct way to write a sentence. Just It's just an educational tool so that you can better see the sequencing of the positionals. So when you look at the sequencing of the positionals, just off the top of your head, if you're looking at it on a graft like this, it would be for, of, verb, with, of, with, of, and if you keep going, with, of, with, by. With, the possessive, always follows the verb and always precedes the authority. You can never have two with this together, just like you can't have two of those together unless there's a conjunction in there. So therefore, the shortest, briefest, correct sentence structure you can have with a verb is for of verb with by and then the most basic structure would be for of verb with of with by it's never going to be of by never 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 that would completely void the mathematical interface this is correct positional sequencing so let's move on here so the claimant has a sensation, and what's the sensation concerned with? A guilty claim. So they're sensing a guilty claim. Is with the harm. Harm is the possessive. Harm is possessing the guilty claim. <clears throat> so is the guilty claim harming someone? Let's see. What's the harm concerned with? Of this man. 
which man? What's possessing the man? The kidnapped performance. Oh, hold on here. Now we have another violation of the sequencing principles. When you put a conjunction into a correct sentence structure, a conjunction will either come between two sevens or two five six sevens. Conjunctions are not modifiers. They do not modify anything, and there is no modification within correct sentence structure itself, so that doesn't even apply. So what I'm seeing here is the conjunction is a neutral condition of state. In correct sentence structure, what happens on this side has to happen on this side. Rule one, rule equal. And Jason has, with the kidnap performance and of the time theft. So of the time theft must be with the time theft in order to be correct. It has to be with the and with the on either side of the conjunction. And again, um, within my own construct, I don't use the word time. Time does not exist. I use locations in the now space. So by this claim, so let's see how Jason checks his work. Again, he puts the unnecessary coal on there, which voids the whole thing. So let's just take that out with the honor and grace. For this claimant of the time theft, that is, when you read it backwards, that is not what he has written in the sentence above. He has written for this claimant with the time theft and of the kidnap performance, which is not correct. But let's treat this as a forward moving sentence without regards to what has come before. So we have for this claimant, that's the cause of the time theft, which is a concern, is with the kidnap performance. Wow. What is going on here? He has with the kidnap performance. I know I said without regards to what came before, but I'm looking that he has kidnap performance up top. And then when he goes backwards, he still has with kidnap performance, which is not correct. It would have to be of the. With becomes of, for becomes by. One congruency, one meaning, one function. One cause per sentence, one authority per sentence. Yada, yada, yada. So this sentence is not correct uh, grammatically. And I think Jason did try to correct it. But it's so, for me, you know, the, it's muddy. I'm guessing that the volition behind what Jason is trying to convey is that the claimant, who I guess would be him, senses a guilty claim of harm on himself and that he kidnapped, performed a kidnap on himself or on this man and he stole time from this man, whoever this man is. It might be him. Maybe he's talking about kidnapping someone else. I don't know. This sentence is very muddy and hope this helps Jason in his correct sentence structure journey. Jason, if you want to do some workshops and straighten this stuff out, lickety split, contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and I'll set up a consultation. And you can apply for a workshop. Thanks for the comment and thanks for the membership. Next comment comes from Rosvon. And this is a comment on the innocent until proven guilty video. Well, one of them anyways. And he says, they do not facilitate anything. The more you deal with them, the more they get paid. So many cop watch channels show how innocent people are if the lawman doesn't like their vibe. I, I do have a take on these cop watch channels or these audit channels, so to speak. The majority of the, the individuals on those channels are so darn obnoxious. Like they are just outright rude, um, antagonistic condescending talking to cops or police or law enforcement officers however you want to term it i have never ever really and i've had you know i don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing but i've had a lot of interaction with police throughout my life especially my younger days i have never met one who was ever overtly rude i've seen officers that were light on patience. And I think about that. 
here are these people that live their lives. Who are you to judge them, to step into their shoes, to know what they're going through day in, day out, what they've seen on their jobs? Because police officers do a lot more than, you know, messy up the lives of sovereign citizens. They do go out and curb crime, protect the public. That's their main function, okay? Who do you call when someone's breaking into your house? Or, or, or there's a, a shooting going on, or someone's threatening you, threatening to come kill you. Who are you going to call? Or are you going to defend yourself? I mean, that's up to you. Of course, it's a choice. What I'm saying is these people spend a great deal of their lives every day on the streets dealing with mainly crime. Mainly crime. Okay? And they work 12 hours a day. Sometimes they work double shifts. I mean, how are you going to feel if you just did a double shift? You're a police officer. I'm just saying with your honor and grace, put yourself in their shoes, Rosvon, and you've just completed a double shift and uh, you just want to go home to your family, play with your kids, take a nap, drink a beer. I don't know what you want to do. Uh, but then you come, you know, you're walking from your car, your patrol car to go into the station to punch out. And then this guy comes up with a camera to audit you about constitutional rights <laughs> i mean come on maybe you just dealt with a couple murders a domestic violence situation a situation where a child was being abused and beaten uh, a dead infant something you know these things you deal with every day as a police officer out there in the field and then this auditor comes up you to you with a camera saying you're, you're you don't participate with the Constitution and whatever or the hell else they say, the BS. I'm just not for that type of behavior at all, Rosvon. Not at all. It, two wrongs do not make a right. Even if a police officer is obnoxious, even if they are a little bit overbearing, doesn't make it okay for someone to do it back to them. See, two wrongs don't make a right. And this is what I'm trying to, to portray with this peace and neutrality principle that I brought to the table. And I mean it in every sense of the word. Grace comes into this, and grace is a super powerful tool. Super powerful tool to, to use if you are humble about it, if you mean it. It will permeate your biosphere, your immediate biosphere, if you really feel that. Now, okay, let's take a look at your other comment. They took me in for five, six hours in Spain just for having for not having ID with me. In Madrid, they riped up my hair, riped up my hair to make it seem like I was fighting them. All because I happened to wear a Palestinian scarf and being in the wrong place at their wrong time. By the way, none of the businesses in the area were willing to give me the footage from their cameras so I can prove what they did. Did you offer them money, Razvan? A lot of people don't want to get involved with anything that might, uh, in their minds, put them in a bad light with law enforcement. So that's why. But a lot of times, if you offer them something for it, don't just say, hey, can I have your footage, please? No, you got to be a little bit more savvy about it, Razvan. You know, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Um, if you know anything about running business, it's that's the way that it has to be done. That nothing is for nothing. Um, you can't really expect someone just to give you something like that, especially if they're a business owner in the neighborhood that works with or interacts with law enforcement. And then someone, you know, comes along wearing a Palestinian scarf, which I don't know, maybe in wherever you were at that time. Um, they are not pro-Palestinian. I don't know. It's like wearing the colors of a football team going into the Super Bowl. If you wear the opposing team's colors and you walk into their domain, they're not going to welcome you too, too kindly, right? I mean, you're going to walk through Tel Aviv with a Palestinian scarf on your head? I don't know. Are you going to walk through the Gaza Strip wearing the, you know, the, with, the, with the Star of David? These are like, things that I think about when I navigate because I don't want to the way I navigate I don't it's not my volition to draw attention to myself it's my volition to go the smoothest most beneficial way for everyone involved okay I don't participate with things like protests no tests or anything like that 
I do things in the confidential that are more meaningful for me in my biosphere than doing it out there in front of everybody. I prefer to do it behind the scenes. I prefer not to put it out there. Simply because when you draw attention to yourself, like I think you're, you're saying you did there, this is what happens. This is literally what happens. You can just look at the political parties in, in the past tense United States and see how this stuff happens, right? You have these Antifa groups going around destroying things, not being sanctioned, really. Just given free reign to do whatever they want, and it's okay. But then the other side, the Republicans, um, when they do something like storm the Capitol, now all of a sudden it's a freaking national um, issue, security issue, you know, with that one little guard there that let them in in the most in the place on the entire earth with the most security probably anywhere. And all these people storm in and there's one little security guard that backs up and lets them in. I mean, come on. Oh. Reminds me of that Rush uh, song. All the world to me is a stage and we are merely players. But Or you can go back to Rasp Rasputin. Or was that Shakespeare? I, I don't remember. Thanks for the comment and the membership, Rosvon. Hope that made sense, whatever it is I just said. Next comment is on the same uh, video. My guess is, colon space, quote, God's number one servant is Satan, end quote, question mark. So that's actually a question. Is Brian Granucci asking me what his guess is? My guess is, God's number one servant is Satan. Well, Brian, I guess we'd have to know what you mean by God and what you mean by Satan. And... Are they available for a video consult? Because if they'd like one with me for 10 to 15 minutes, if they want to learn the grammar or anything like that, they can contact me at the email address below at the bottom of the screen. And you can too, Brian. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from one of my favorite and definitely most astute students, Jens. Also a member. Thank you for your membership. And he says, many thanks for some thoughts going few steps beyond pure psychology of the grammar. But where does psychology starts? Where does it end? Isn't it all psychology? Thanks for reminding me to think of this conclusion as well. Yes, Jens. Yes. Great observation. It is all psychology because it all happens here, right? Correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is a psychological operation. Just like all language, it operates in your mind. <laughs> I know operates is a no contract. So let's say it's a psychological performance, psychological condition of state. It all happens here. As I've said many, many times, whenever you sense something, something comes into your port of sensation, words form in your mind to try and categorize it or to describe it. That's the way we're built. And so that's the great thing about correct sentence structure because instead of being at the mercy of these things, now you have a tool with which to utilize these things to your benefit and be a steward of these things and transship them out as correct sentence structure claims. Thank you for the very thoughtful comment. Next comment comes from another one of my favorite and most astute students, Dai. And he says, thanks, Jason. Great stream. Would you do a reaction video to a live court proceeding for edutainment purposes? Yeah, I certainly would do that. That's an interesting uh, idea. Thank you for your membership, Dai, and for the great ideas. Dai is a super creative individual, and it's a joy and a blessing uh, getting to know him. And that's one of the great things about doing what I do. Uh, what I've done for the last five years is I cultivate awesome uh, relationships with individuals like this guy definitely a great idea definitely uh, something i'll look to do in the future i'll find a good one i've already done one i think with the fellow with the blue robe and the and the staff and he goes into court and he uses correct sentence structure i think i did a reaction to that uh if you want to check that out die but uh, i'll i'll check out the other ones too and see what we can see what we can uh, put together 
Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from member Ian, and also one-time student Ian, and he says, Good point. Innocent until proven guilty is just one of those repeated lies that is said over and over to make the sheep docile. Uh, maybe. Maybe. But there are some people that actually believe that. Okay? Even though what they see with their eyes is completely contradicting those words. Interesting thing. And I'll bring this up related to a stream I recently did about religion. Christians are fond of saying, like, Jesus is a shepherd and that they're, you know, the people are his sheep. His followers are his sheep. Ladies and gentlemen, what happens to a sheep? Sheep are herded, corralled, they graze, then they get sheared and eventually butchered. That's what a sheep is. So if that's your volition to be a sheep, then... Good luck. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from colon Benjamin hyphen something. And it's also a comment on the innocent until proven guilty. I asked how the, how the system facilitates their claim that one is innocent until proven guilty. And Benjamin says the defendant is to be treated as an innocent party until evidence of guilt can be established. And then I said, are innocent people normally detained and imprisoned? Just think about what you just said, Benjamin. If the defendant, why would they call him a defendant right off the bat? Right? In court, a defendant is someone who's there to defend themselves against accusations. So if they're innocent, there's no defense necessary if they're presumed innocent. Am I right? So number one, why would you be called or classified, categorized as a defendant? And number two, why are you in jail if you're innocent? If they're to be treated as an innocent party, then why are they in jail? Why are they behind bars? Why are they out on some kind of bond being watched? It's logic. Not unless the arresting party was ill-equipped to handle the situation. By stating that a piece of paper is law, does that piece of paper give you authority? Authority comes from knowledge, Benjamin. Okay? What we're talking about here is someone that has been physically detained, forced to do something against their will, taken into custody, whatever. But yet they're innocent. You see what I'm saying here? I hope you can get what I'm pushing at here. Does a policy officer have authority over the living man if that man is acting within the law, within his actions? What law are we talking about here, Benjamin? Are we talking about fiction babble law? What is law? See, that this is why I completely voided using the word law, legal, all those things out of my correct sentence structure construct because those are fiction tactics, fiction words, opinions, assumptions. I navigate on principles, balance of the honor of grace, position of peace and neutrality, maintenance of rule one, rule equal. Those principles. Laws are not necessary. Or to put it in a negative condition, stay do no harm. It's easy. TIs, why viewing and searching for the truth oneself is so crucial. The last time I dealt with law enforcement, I was almost arrested for not giving my last name to them. Hmm. Well, I don't know the ins and outs of your situation there. Um, I know that if or when I am questioned by a Vasily, I, without hesitation, give them my name, my correct name. I also give them the fiction name. And if it goes that far, I show them the way I'm towing those fiction documents as salvages. And once I start going into that, they usually don't want to be bothered anymore with it. Usually. Um, so it sounds to me, Benjamin, I mean, I don't, okay, his name is Colin Benjamin hyphen Edward. 
going by the way you're, you're talking here, I'd have to say that you don't have closure on correct sentence structure. At best, you're probably a bare-bones beginner without a grasp of the rudimentary mechanics. I'd have to say your knowledge of correct sentence structure is probably theoretical at this point. So that explains why you're saying the things you're saying, because it seems as you're navigating with some sort of fiction against fiction thing using common law or whatever it is, the living man type stuff with the gerund at the end there. If you want to learn correct sentence structure, Benjamin, hit me up at the email address at the bottom of your screen. Apply for a workshop. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consult. You can ask me whatever you want, and we'll see if correct sentence structure is something that could be beneficial to you and your construct. Thanks for the comment. Final comment comes from Chill Per Jerg Patriota. And they say, as long as you identify us as legal fiction, as long as you identify us, like I said right off the bat, who is you and who is us? <laughs> so if someone identifies as a legal fiction, is that the same thing as a, a man identifying as a woman or a woman identifying as a toaster or <laughs> whatever? You get my point. In your jurisdiction, we are with the noose around our necks. Well... Contract is by choice. So if you choose to put a noose around your neck, you know, I'm not going to tell you you can't do that. Although I may intervene, um, depending. Uh, it's never a good idea to put a noose around anyone's neck, really. We were indoctrinated not to think believing that we are thinking. We were indoctrinated not to think believing that we are thinking that makes absolutely zero sense to me apologies chill per jerk patriota uh, but go ahead and answer the question if you if you'd like who is you and who is us who are you speaking for who gave you consent to speak for them to make claims for them because in correct sentence structure, we may only make claims for ourselves. Anything else is a trespass. That about wraps it up, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. I hope this cultivated your knowledge a little bit and entertained you as well. All part of my knowledge cultivation scenario uh, that I'm promulgating. If you'd like to learn the grammar again, one more time, contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consult. If you want to join the channel membership, hit the join button below and check the two tiers out. The second tier, loyalists and contributors have access to material that is not available to the public. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.